So you just got comboed into a corner and you know your opponent is going to do the classic instant air dash overhead. So what do you do to get out? You just reflect, right? You put some distance between yourself and your opponent. Maybe you even get out of the corner. But instead of that, he actually baited your reflect and went into an empty jump low and now you're screwed. But what if I told you that there's a way to block both the overhead and the low attack with the same technique, the same button inputs. What's up my lovely bushes, my name is Globco and welcome to another tutorials video. This is actually gonna be a very quick tip, I can show you very fast, but it's gonna take a while to explain how it happens, why it happens, and what are the risks of using this all the time. This is a technique that I was taught by Brave, our top dog, the best player we have in the country. I can't wait to meet up with him on Lockdown 2018, the biggest tournament we have in Portugal, and hopefully I'll get good enough to show him the ropes by then. Shout out to Brave, shout out to Lockdown, come on over if you're in Lisbon or around the area around September, come watch some cool fights and hang out. So the idea is you're getting beat up, you fall to the ground and on wake up you hold back, down back and then special. So the notation is something like 414S. And Brave has been calling this the fuzzy reflect. I think it comes from Blaze Blue, but I, I wouldn't know. If you do this correctly, you'll block any overhead attack. And if the opponent is expecting a reflect and goes for a delayed low, then you still reflect the low attack. And that's kind of it. If all you wanted to do was learn the trick, that's it. You don't need to watch the rest of the video. Uh, go ahead and practice it. But if you have the patience to learn how it works, why it works and what the risks are, then uh, let's continue. So how is this different from a normal reflect? If you just 4S, you're gonna get caught by that jump empty low. I'm getting comboed. I know that there's an instant air dash coming and I'm just gonna spam the reflect right here. And I got caught. I got caught by a low attack, which means this is a lot of damage incoming. By doing the 414S, you're actually adjusting the timing of the reflect and you'll catch that empty low. Now, maybe you've caught some empty lows in the past. And the reason for that is because people tend to jump super early when they're going for an empty low attack. If you jump too early on the instant air dash and throw a, an overhead heavy, the heavy will whiff, you won't hit it. But players aren't worried about that stuff because they know they'll go for the empty low. So when you see a jump coming on too soon, that is an obvious sign that the opponent is going low and not overhead. So your reflect will actually just catch it, even if you don't do this technique. At higher levels, the players start to bait the reflect because more and more people start doing it around like Demon and Super Saiyan 3. So when they expect the reflect, they just jump and then there's the low medium that catches after the reflect whiffs. With this tech though, the 414S or fuzzy reflect, you'll catch the low on that exact timing. Now for overheads, it's actually not as good as the normal reflect because the reflect won't come off. You'll just block the attack and then you have to take a full block string to the face. So if you're sure that the opponent is going to overhead, then go ahead and just use the normal reflect. But at higher levels, Levels, you either have crazy reflexes or you're gonna have to guess where your opponent is going and this is going to cover both options this is gonna cover an overhead attack with a block and gonna cover the empty jump low with a reflect this will even keep you protected from just a straight up low attack if you're coming from a sliding knockdown and the reflect won't come off it will just be a, a low block now this technique also works with a hard knockdown but only if the opponent jumps if they go straight up for a low then it's it's really really tough so there you go if the opponent goes for an the air dash overhead, you still block the attack, same as the sliding knockdown. And if the opponent goes for an empty low, you'll still reflect the thing. So why does this work? What 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 is going on here? Uh, and it's pretty simply buffering. If you've played fighting games in the past, you know buffering your inputs is the best way of playing them. Now what is buffer? Basically I'm pressing buttons and the buttons don't immediately come off. They go into this like little memory thing and then they come off in order. So if I do a light medium heavy combo, I don't need to press the light, the medium and the heavy on the precise frame that they're landing. I can just go one, two, three. And you can hear that I press the heavy attack button way before the heavy attack button comes off. In fact, I press it basically at the same attack as the medium is landing. I do one, two, three. And this is what buffering is. The buttons go into this little virtual queue and then they come off in order. You know how players usually uh, do a heavy attack as they reach the ground before launching super? That is the player saying, I want to do a heavy attack and then quarter circle forward right bumper. So the super doesn't come off while they're still in the air because the way the game interprets that is first I gotta do a heavy attack and once the heavy attack finishes, that's when the super comes in. Since the heavy attack only finishes on the ground, this makes sure that the character is on the ground when you launch the super. It's incredibly useful for characters like uh, Trunks for instance. Trunks doesn't have any air super, so if you do a quarter circle forward and right bumper, he'll actually just do the sword slash. But this is not what you want. You don't want to do this. 
So what you do is uh, you press heavy and then do the super. And that way you make sure that the super always comes off. It's the same theory that's going on here. I'm telling my character to crouch and then stand up and reflect as a buffer. Since my character just crouched, if Vegeta comes in for an overhead, I don't have time to reflect if the overhead is timed perfectly. If it's late, you'll actually pull the reflect off. But my character will still block the overhead attack because my character just stood up. It just didn't have the time to reflect. Then the buffer automatically just adjusted the timing for that reflect to come off perfect on the empty jump low and that is why this technique covers both the overhead and the empty jump low options and hopefully with this explanation now you understand what's happening and you understand exactly how to do this all that's left is going to training mode and practice go ahead and uh, record your dummy doing a combo and then going for an overhead and for a uh, empty jump low but just like everything in dragon ball fighters if you become too predictable and you're using this all the time the opponent can punish you and let's just say that if the opponent is good enough at reading this technique away from you you're probably in for a touch of death just saying so how can this be punished well if the opponent doesn't do anything, this is what happens. You just whiffed a reflect. And if they're expecting this technique, they can punish you on whiffing the reflect. They can delay their low attack even more, so it comes off after the reflect whiffs. Or they can simply dragon rush you, since you're still recovering from the whiffed reflect, you can't actually tech the dragon rush for as hard as you try. And then there's obviously, like, any character that can cross you up in the corner. I mean, you're holding a direction and trying to reflect. If the opponent changes directions, then obviously that direction is useless and the reflect won't come off. And now this technique looks pretty useless. But look, this covers overheads, this covers low attacks, uh, it even covers straight up lows or empty jump lows. And the timing of all these things uh, can be hard to read. And now you have one technique that covers all of those options. It's an awesome technique that you should have in your pocket, but just like everything in Dragon Ball Fighters, you should not overuse it. And that's it on the fuzzy reflex. Thanks again, Brave, for the help. If you guys want to know more about the lockdown tournament happening in September, there should be a link for it in the description down below. Last time around, Brave helped me decide whether I should switch character or use Sparking Blast. How do you make that decision? Find out in this video right here. If you're in the mood for something else, there's also the video at the bottom. But as always, thank you very much for watching. My name is Glopku and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.